The DIY community hacking on their own stuff actually helps DJI sell drones. Same thing with Vesk, beneficial for everyone. 100%. The idea of Vesk excites me. Really fun aspect to the experimental side. Vesk gives you that that ability to play and that ability to like manipulate your board and mess around. What brought me into Vesk? Woo! Vesk! When I ride them, they're so buttery and good, like at slow speeds. Uh, 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 you know when you um had a uh, and you have you ever had a dreams that that a microphone? Damn, am I really rolling a future motion mug right now? I didn't even realize. <laughs> okay, for this video, you have to take a sip of whatever. I take a sip on every video. It's just never, between takes. Never take a sip. It's so like yeah, it's rude to eat and drink while talking to someone. Sipping's okay. Oh, pinky out. All right. Hi, Brandon. Dial. Stop that. This is an accident. I, grabbed. I didn't even mean to grab this mug. What had happened was I opened up the uh, cabinet today, and off the top shelf comes falling a mug full speed towards the ground. My lightning fast reflexes. I channel my inner Kyle Hansen. Grabbed it. Caught it. And so that, the universe chose this cup for me. I didn't choose this cup. I am very excited for this video today. Welcome back to the channel. We have two of the biggest names in our one wheel industry right now. We got Jeff McCosker, Bodie Harrison, and we are going to be talking about best pros, cons, things you want to see, don't want to see. Get to the bottom of this. What does TFL think of Vesk? You guys want to start off with anything? First off, I would just like to say thanks very much for having us, Max Shaw. That's how you say Max's last Ooh, name for everyone in the world. Like a year with you guys. What? Yeah. That's, that's it? That's how you say it, Shaw. Sure. What? So actually, and you want to make sure, uh, if you want to go for the full Chinese pronunciation, it's Shaw. And you have to make sure you do a downwards tonal inflection at the end of it because if you do an upwards tonal inflection. So. Okay, back on, back on track. What about you, buddy? Anything you wanted to say? Thanks for having me. Since we're in the very beginning, I'm gonna just say it to get it out of the way. I'm not against Vesk, so let's go. Uh, let's get in the conversation. Let's do it. I guess we'll kick it off with how much. So you guys had a Vesk here through Makers PEV for a few months. Um, how much time have you spent on it? What What were your thoughts overall? Yeah, so we still have a Vesk board here. Um, let's see, my first ever experience with Vesk was someone had a built out pint. At one of our meals, I think our first ever meals on One Wheels event, someone brought one by, so this was years ago. And uh, I rode it for about 100 feet, and then when I was turning left, it totally shut off on me because I didn't have the foot pad program correctly. And I tacoed it, and it hurt really bad, and I hated it. So I was like, well, these things suck, and I just bailed on it. And then um, we've got a local homie that showed back up like maybe a year ago. And he had a Vesk on an XR and he started whipping it around and we actually rode with him out of Granite Bay and he was like keeping up and I was like, that's pretty surprised. It's like, that's cool. That's really rad. And then uh, we over at Maker PEV, he hooked us up at Dirt Surfers with a built out Vesk board and it was an 84 volt. So it was the big one. Um, and he tuned it. We tuned it as best we could, but I jumped on it. First, I jumped on it. And the first thing I did was try to do like a rolling reverse burnout on it within like 10 feet and it shut off on me. And I was like, oh cool, I broke it already. But I, we were able to like tune that part out and like figure out some other stuff. We got it riding pretty good by the end of that time. And then we came back here and I know Keaton and Jake had kind of been torquing on it and figuring some stuff out and playing with the settings and stuff. But it never really like super inspired confidence with me because um, I don't know. When I ride them, they're so buttery and good, like, at slow speeds from what I see. If you, like, keep it mellow and kind of just don't, like, gun it super hard and crank it back and, like, climb curbs and, like, really whip it, they're so buttery. Like, they feel so amazingly good. But then as soon as you really start to, like, crank it and really, really push the limits of it, I feel like that's where you start to reach the edges of, like, where they're kind of rough. And that seems to be getting tuned out the more and more 
that I ride them with more firmware updates. And then like, I don't know, every time we say something like that, we get hammered online from people that are just like, oh no, bro, you need to try it. No, the new firmware update fixed all that. And then we ride the new firmware update and it like didn't necessarily fix it, but it is better. It's like incrementally better every single new one that comes out and everyone's got their own tune. So I see it, like I've ridden it for years, you know, all these different iterations and it's a hundred percent getting better for sure. It's getting better. So, um, yeah, I mean, if it just stays on that same trajectory, I see it probably being like maybe 12 to 18 months before it's like super sick to where people are going to be like, this absolutely rides better. No questions asked straight. Up. It, like if it stays on the same trajectory. Now we may get some super computer programmer coming in all of a sudden be like, Oh, you guys are stupid here. Just tweak that, tweak that. Here's a line of code. And now all of a sudden it's dank like tomorrow very possible but all in all i think just to like wrap my thoughts up it's sick it's promising i really like that the community is getting together and like hacking away on these things and like you know bringing something new to the table i think that's rad that we don't have to all just depend on one crew of folks to tune it so that's cool and i like that you know it's opening up the market and sort of getting more competition in there that's always good for everyone that's just how markets work you know, the more people you have throwing in on it, the better things get and the more innovation you get. So that's rad. It's dope. It's got a ton of promise, a ton of potential, but it's still a little rough around the edges. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to be awesome unless something crazy happens to stop it from being awesome. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. How about you, Bode? The Vesk. Um, I think I'm pretty much in the same boat. I think pretty much everything you said it's pretty on par with me. I think the Vesk is exciting. I think it has a lot of growth potential. Um, and I definitely see it being kind of one of the viable options moving forward. I have a new friend in in life that's interested in getting into one wheeling. And in his mind, it's, should I get a Pint, a GT, an XR, or a Vesk? It's, it's becoming definitely more of an option. So um, I think that's cool. And I think that it's rad that you get with the Vesk this extra level of customization and this extra depth to the board's programming and the, the way you can change the way the board rides, which for me isn't necessarily what I want. And so that's the part that I can add is like Max was asking, you know, what do you not like about it? Why are you not riding a Vesk? And for me, I don't have the time and I also am not necessarily the kind of person where I want to sit there and tweak and ride and tweak and change and tweak and ride and tweak. I more want to have my setup kind of be, as far as the programming of my one wheel, be pretty much where it's at and then tweak myself and my riding and push my limits off of that foundation for my muscle memory. So what I would want out of Vesk is, and I'm sure this is in like the near future, is like modes, like pre-programmed modes settings where it's like if you have this battery you know like this amount of power out of the battery whatever this one is blah 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 this motor like set your settings to this and it's called space monkey and it's like you have these different modes where people can select the mode ride it around and change it just like we had the modes to choose from we had extreme and basic and classic or classic extreme yeah. and classic and, and elevated. elevated in the v1 yeah. and then it moved to the other ones and like they always gave us that, like, not always. Then they gave us custom, which was cool, but, like, we couldn't really customize the ride that much. Yeah, the big issue I had with that is you couldn't recreate mission. I was right. like, yeah. Because, like, all I wanted and all I've ever wanted is the back end of mission and the front end of delirium. Literally. Like, I just want a torquier front end, but that same saggy back end, that flowy, buttery back end, and we've never been able to get it, which is frustrating. Mm. But it is what it is. Um... Let's see, what was I going to say? I was going to, I had a point there, but then you kept on going and I lost it. Oh, you had mentioned that you kind of want like the pre-programmed modes and everything like that. And you're not the one to like constantly tweak and constantly do that. Um, I think that you could relate that a lot to like the drone market. Right. So yeah. maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Like you have a fully built out like custom FPV drone, right? And how yes. often do you fly that thing and tweak on it and do all that kind of stuff? Like I've had two flights and yeah. since then been working on it nonstop and I hate it. 
Yeah, so <laughs> I kind of think that's probably where the one wheel market would be going in the future with the introduction of Vesk and everything. It's like you've got two types of people. You got the people who like want to just buy like a DJI drone off the shelf, pre-built out, but guess what? It's got restrictions and limitations. You can't fly it in this certain airspace. If something breaks on it, the whole thing has to go back to DJI to get fixed. But a lot of people are going to want that because it's so easy. You unbox it, you turn it on, you freaking fly it, right? But then you've got this whole other segment of people. They're like, no, I want to 3D print all my parts. I want to custom tune it like this. The weight's got to be this. It's got to fly like this. I want to run these sticks on this device. And so you've got this whole other segment of people that want that. So I think it's radical that we have options like FPV wouldn't take off if it was only like homebrew DIY stuff or if it was only like just DJI running the show. Like it wouldn't take off. But now that you have both of them, you've got an avenue for different people depending on like what your interests are and what your time level commitment is and your passion towards it. And then it's gonna be good all around for everyone. Like the the DIY community hacking on their own stuff actually helps DJI sell drones. So it's like same thing with Vesk. Like I think people building out Vesk and getting it super dank and dope and buttery and like all it can be is actually in the long run going to help future motion and awareness and adoption and things like that. So 100%. I, I see it as all being, you know, I don't know, beneficial for everyone. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And the idea of Vesk excites me. I, you asked, we have, we've had a Vesk around. And I've ridden it a little bit. It is pretty fun. And there is like a f really fun aspect to the experimental side, you know, because I come from skateboarding, snowboarding. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I want, I want to find style. I want to find lines. I want to excite myself. I want to go out. And so that's kind of where I'm focused. But it also, the vest gives you that, that ability to play and that ability to like manipulate your board and mess around. But ultimately for me, like I haven't ridden a Vesk that I like riding more than my one wheel yet. And when I do, when I, I, I told this to Kyle D, I said, once there's a Vesk that rides better than a one wheel, I'll probably be riding that. Because for me, like I, you can love or hate future motion because they've done some really cool stuff, like invent the one wheel and like bring that to us. And they've also done some really uncool stuff that I'm not going to name. We all have our gripes, but at the end of the day, what it's about for me is the one wheeling itself, self-balanced, motored, f electric soul shredding. Whatever board that's on, I'm going to ride the one that feels the best to me. And it, for me, it's about the sport and it's about the community and about the creation side of it. So, like, I don't, I don't owe any loyalties or royalties to Future Motion. I'm pretty sure Jeff doesn't either. So if there's any speculation about that, not the case at all. We really are just riding what feels best to us, and right now that's the one wheel. But riding Max's board and riding the VX wheel from um, Veed, there's they're creeping up and they're starting to feel really good. And so, like ultimately for me, I love the the ridingness of them. Dado's wheel, I rode his in um, San Diego. The riding feels great, like you said, it feels great and buttery. But when we, when I get into tricks and want that responsiveness and the feel of the one wheel, it's not really there for the Vesk yet. And that's just in more of the tuning. So I think over time, like the Vesk is definitely gonna be a legitimate competitor with the one wheel. Um, and we'll see, you might you might catch me riding a Vesk one day. You never know. Maybe we gotta see a trick or two from Bodhi in a second here. Oh, yeah, Cause you haven't session. tried tricking it yet I have not with my trick board. Yeah. yeah. Cause we were sessioning the last two days. It was keeping up. You know, yeah. it was doing some of the things that the Foot other boys do. Footpad yeah. was a little glitchy, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. this one? We, yeah, we, one? we had to take that thing off four yeah. or five times. Oh, uh, what well, <laughs> happens? Yeah, from the slams, I think there was a, a little loose connection in there, but every time I unplugged it, plugged it back in, reset, it was fine. But, yeah. So. And you right. called up. Hold on, let me see this. When it first happened, the first time he called up the homie Dado, and they're just like on the phone. They have this whole squad of freaking Vesk pioneers that are just got homies, got homies back. I thought that was hella tight. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's like if you want a tuning change, you're like, you know what? It's just not the the way it's timing, engaging. Um, it's not kicking in the way I want. You ask a few engineers, and they'd be like, change this value, change this tweak this and you like you get closer and closer to that ideal ride that you want so that's what drives me is the the pursuit of the best ride and it's just like always right there within grasp but not quite so it's frustrating but it's it's really addicting as well 
just what I've been doing for the last three months is just tuning my trail board, which is over there. The Trail Beast, the 84 volt Trail Beast, modded out with pretty much all TFL stuff. Um, but yeah, it's like the perfect epitome of aftermarket innovation. It's we have all the hardware there. Now we have the software that we can customize. So, um, You're like what? Is it just the motor on that is sort of the only future motion thing left on it? The, the hypercore is. Uh, yes, the and the box itself. and the battery box. You don't have a Torx box on that, right? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, you could. I do have a 3D printed box that I could have used for the 84 volt as well. But uh, for the purpose of helping Chai to show that you can do it with a stock box with, that's still in there. But yeah, 3D printed box is actually much bigger and more space for a beefier battery, just FYI. Um, but anyway, so the motor is actually, you don't even need a future motion motor anymore. Front sensor is modded as well. So we don't need future motion for any one wheel development and mods moving forward. I'm not exactly a speedster. I've come to acceptance that I'm not gonna be a finalist in Race for the Rail. So that leaves me in like this middle sweet spot, if you will, that um, I don't need to keep practicing on the GT because I'm not gonna make it to the finals. So I need all that I can to help boost me up in speed and performance. So that's what Vesk Help does is that you can max out the battery voltage, um, any mods you want on there for the underground and, and qualifiers. So that along with doing some tricks, so all of it combined, I think I'm just really happy to, to find this and share some of it with you guys. A lot of people were guessing, theorizing that you are aligned with Future Motion. There's some politics there. That's why you haven't really um, said much about it and you don't want to lose their ties with them. So it's nice to hear that I you mean, guys are about- what ties do we have with Future Motion right now? I mean, <clears throat> it's aftermarket modding. They've always been, they've had a track record of shutting people down in yeah. this sector, right? Yeah. So maybe I don't they're know. coming around. Maybe. I don't know. There's progress for we're sure just, there. We're just there doing is progress. Our thing, man. I don't um, know. But they, they invented one wheels. They're making one wheels. I would rather try, like, I would rather try to work with them to make one wheels better. Yeah. Like, that's my preference. But, and, you know, until they, come around and really, really want to. There's not a whole lot we can do. We're just gonna keep doing our thing. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. There's like no politics or weird shit going on, but. Hey, that's squashed. So. There is no politics here. I think yeah. it's just, you guys haven't ridden a Vesk that you like enough yet. Yeah, that's fair. Like I said, it rides great mellow. Like if I was just mellow street cruising, like commute to work, I would for sure ride one. They're great. They're awesome. But like, there are certain things about it that I don't think are quite there yet, and I don't 100% trust it, but I've also been riding one wheels for like seven years now or something like that. I don't and even know how many years. I'm so, I'm so yeah. used to it and used to the settings. I know how it's going to react when I do certain things. And then when I jump on a vest and do certain things, sometimes it does it one way, sometimes it does it another way, depending on exactly how you hit it. And I just think that consistency isn't there yet, and that's why I'm not on one but keep in mind future motion has had a what eight year head start on firmware programming over vesk so they're a lot further along it's not saying vesk won't get there it's just as of right now i don't personally for me feel like it's there yeah so that's yeah. just my thoughts that's on fair. it yeah, i have a question. question why i have one question before we session this thing and get a get a feel for it yeah what, how, if you wanted to buy a Vesk, how do you buy a Vesk and how is it legal? Is it legal because you, you buy it part by part and nobody's selling a full wheel? Like, what, what makes it so you can purchase a Vesk and then, like, how do you purchase a Vesk if you want to? What's, like, the process? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, especially for those looking to get into it, it's pretty daunting. Um, you're going into uncharted territory. You feel lost and hopeless sometimes. But um, essentially, there is a pre-assembled controller now. And what makes it legal is that it's all open source, so there's, it doesn't infringe on any patents with the, the coding. Everything is just contributed by the community. Um, and like you said, it's not selling a complete wheel. It's just the brains, the controller, and it just so happens to fit in a one wheel. So that's wow. kind of, Yeah, <laughs> just by sheer coincidence. Um, but yeah, that's the main thing, and then also, I think it's just been um, behind the wraps, you know, just not enough people using it. So, I mean, we'll have to see. That's a, that's a gray area, you know. But the, the last point on talking about uh, future motion is just the people were wondering, possibly you were aligned because 
you would be basically be supporting a compet direct competitor to Future Motion, right? So there's absolutely no conflict that you would see being there? No. Why, well, why? I think the concern here would be that if more people are riding Vesk, fewer people are buying one wheels, thereby you're cutting into Future Motion's bottom line, right? That's the concern. But that's such a shitty way of thinking. That's the exact same way of thinking that leads you know, future motion to think that we're competitors with them because we both sell one wheel accessories, not realizing that because float life is here, float life is building up the entire community and the entire market, making the market bigger. It's like, it's not a zero sum game. We're not taking your slice of pie. We're bringing another pie to the table and being like, yo, grab a slice from every pie, man. Like, it's it's all good. It's not a zero sum game. So the more people that are getting into Vesk, the quicker the whole entire community is going to grow, and then the bigger the pie, man. That's just how it goes. Just like DJI and the FPV DIY community, same yeah. thing. Because ultimately, it's like back in the day when Jake Burton made snowboarding. It's like this is this is a sport now. Like one single wheeled, self balancing electric board riding is now, in my mind at least, a thing, an activity, a sport. Right now, Future Motion has the patent on it. They came up with it, and they're holding it down. Vest is creeping up, but at this point, it's it's a sport and an industry and a community and a lifestyle. So it's like the ball's rolling at this point. Yeah, I think the snowboard analogy makes a ton of sense too, because it's like if Jake Burton was the only one making snowboards, we wouldn't have snowboarding in the Olympics right now. No, it would. Like, it would it would not be the industry or the sport or what it is today. He had to let go. Yeah, you got to let go a little bit. Well, that's what, if you've ever seen Dear Rider, the documentary, he was like, my, his one only like big business regret was like locking down hard on that uh, snowboard patent that he had and like going and suing Tom Sims over it. He was like, that was the biggest mistake I could have made. Like killed our rep, it killed the whole vibe, killed the community, it, like killed innovation. It was like not the thing to do. And once he realized we need to let go a little bit, open up and just let the entire thing breathe, like again, it's not a zero sum game. We bring more people into it, we grow the whole thing entirely and you know, we can actually be bigger and better as a result of that whole thing. So yeah, I think it's the exact same scenario we're seeing here. It's like history repeating itself and we'll just see which direction they choose to go in, so. Along those line of thoughts, like, what would you think if Future Motion put a cease and desist on Vesk? I don't know how they could. What if they did try? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Would you, would you like publicly call them out sort of thing? Like, yo, this is not cool. This is killing the vibe. Yeah, I think that we've done that before. I think they're starting to slowly realize, because I've been telling them this for a long time, like growing the aftermarket community and growing even people that you consider as competitors like open it up let it breathe it's actually good for you and it's good for the community and it's good for the sport as a whole it's not a bad thing i've told them this a bunch and i think they're maybe starting to realize that kind of because it seems like they're possibly loosening their grip a little bit i mean we saw they allowed some mods at race for the rail this year you know yeah. almost yeah. almost progress there for sure everyone who was anyone was riding enduros and cush foot pads on their gts right well, like everybody Everybody was riding Enduros except for one person because they didn't feel comfortable riding a tire they hadn't ridden before. Oh, good point. And then Noah ended up not being able to ride one because he broke his board with the Enduro on it. <laughs> yeah. He had to borrow a board, so he didn't get... And fun fact, there was only one flat tire at Race for the Rail this year, and that was not on an Enduro. That was on a stock tire. What? 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 <laughs> what? What? <laughs> anyway. It's loud and clear. But I think they're starting to come around, and I think they're starting to realize that they got to open up a little bit. So we'll see what the future holds. It's up to them. Cool. T TBD. Vesk! Uh, now that's out of the way, let's talk about some interesting things. Yeah! So you rode my Vesk upside down. Yeah. What'd you think of it? Yeah, it was tight. It was super fun riding a board upside down. Um, it was interesting to see how you'd done it. I thought you guys just like uh, pinched the sensor on, just like set it to a setting always on, but you didn't. You did it to where it's... Telepathy. Yeah, telepathy, right? To where it angles out at a certain point, then it clicks on, and then you basically have like a rudimentary simple stop built into it. 
to where it's always going to go battery down first. And then if it does go battery down first, it stays on for mm -hmm. one second before it turns off, is right? Mm -hmm. So that was a really cool, interesting way to do it. Shout Although, out to Dotto, by the way. Dotto yeah. Mista. He's yes. one of the main engineers. Although, Bodhi, you cannot Jesus flip on that because you do land your board battery front yeah. for a Jesus flip. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we can do some tweaks to some make that work. We'll yeah. But technically you can't ride, if you do, in order to land that Jesus flip that you did, you had to basically air out your one wheel and it doesn't do that every single time. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, so, and then it only rides upside down for like 10, 10 feet, 15 feet or maybe. something before it turns off. So I guess it'd be the same thing. It was cool, man, that you could do that. Uh, super customizable shit. You could ride it like EUC style where you stand on the side. I've seen you do that a bunch. You could ride it upside down on the side, top side, like whatever it's rad it opens up different opportunities to not have to completely rely on the sensor which is cool so yeah rad awesome jeff now now you can do a kickflip <laughs> nah. uh, you had it you had it how about you you tried it as well i tried the upside down also it was fun it definitely uh it opens up more possibilities for lines which i thought was sick like we got a clip of max starting uh, with the board upside down, it starts on his face and then it like pulls back and his board's upside down. You're like, what the f, f? And then he flips the board over, mid, like rolling, flip, flips it over to back to right side up and goes and hits a little bolly tail slide. But um, I think the, the upside down thing is cool and it feels cool to ride. It's a fun party trick. And uh, yeah, definitely sick that that is a possibility and you can make tweaks like that to your board and, and get funky like that. Phone boys. Thanks for the input. All right, I got a few community questions to wrap this up. They're very eager to know. Um, but before we do, uh, just to wrap up all this, I think a really great point to make, like what you guys were saying, is like ride modes, right, is going to be huge, um, especially for people either that are beginners or the tinkers, but also those that just want something set up, like you want a mission, you want delirium, something like that. So we're working towards that. Um, right now, I'm just I'm targeting towards like an elevated um, mission mode, which is like an evolve form of mission, which has the auto tilt function when you go up hills. It'll elevate the nose for you and then come back down once you start uh, leveling out. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there. It's not for everybody. Vesk is is very time consuming. Like I personally put in probably close to 60 consecutive hours now just on the phone, uh, tuning, modding. So it is very very it tests your patience for sure and especially in the earlier days like you have to sacrifice some 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 blood and flesh to the best gods you know so <laughs> um, but it's all in the pursuit of the best right and I'm really happy to where the trail board is now so I would love for you guys one of these days to try it on trails and rip it um, it's just it handles like a beast so now I'm working on the trail board or the trick board um, and the last two days have been really promising. It's been keeping up with the, the regular FM boards with pretty much everything. So that's my next project. And um, yeah, so just be, be aware that VESC is not something, it's not really beginner friendly yet. Um, you have to have a DIY mindset and, um, and be willing to spend the time and patience. But so those that want something set up and some, you ride more mellow, definitely go with something more like a GT or XR is just safer um, in terms of like pushback modes and, and, and the, the riding modes. So just wanted to make that clear and uh, point that out. So let's start off with the first uh, community question. What do you guys think of VESCs being involved or allowed to compete in races? Yeah, run it. I think it's great. Why not? I don't see any problem with it. You don't yeah, think like, it's unfair advantage or anything like that? I think the only unfair advantage is you can crank your settings. Ooh, hey now. I think the only unfair advantage, I would say, I would say some vests I think could or should be allowed, but I think there's, like you said, you can max out the board. So the one wheels are built, not built for racing yet. So they're built for the average public basically and commuters. And so you can take the VESC and make it for racing and f max it out. And I've heard about, oh, 30 miles an hour, no pushback, 35 miles an hour craziness. So I think like if your VESC is whatever volts and 
not all schwacked out and you can prove that and show that and get checked because they're they're getting all like the ORL there's like a whole like rules now they're getting it all solid and um, they're doing board checks before races and checking on stuff because they do want to allow us to change our boards and have different boards so I do imagine Vesk will be probably involved in some way shape or form but I think now I'd say maybe not because you can max out the Vesks way faster than the one wheels at this point, and you can't do that with the one wheels. You, well, yeah, kind of. I mean, the one wheels are governed pretty heavy right. right now. Like, the GT is capable of so much more than it's actually showing right now. Like, those things could crank if they really open them up, but they're governed because they're selling them to the general public. Right. It's just like, you know, if uh, Subaru puts out their new car or Honda puts out their new car, uh, they don't put out a race car, you know what I'm saying? Like, they put out a commuter-friendly car. Mm -hmm. It's typically the way it goes. They can't have those things road legal. Maybe throw a little turbo in it and kick the horsies up yeah. for, the, for the marquee, for the buzzwords. A NOS yeah, yeah, a little NOS boosters, for sure. Um, but, yeah, and if we're doing car analogies, it'll end up being the same as car racing, right? It's like you've got stock car racing and you've got F1. So, mm -hmm. you know, at this point, I think we should go... I don't know, kind of like early uh, UFC style and figure out what the best style is, you know? Let the best man win. Whatever you want to race, it's all good. Do like a 24-hour nonstop race. Oh, what's that? Well, that sounds what horrible. What that? The gumball or whatever? The speedball? Oh, the race across America? Yeah. And they're like, figure it out. Race. Yeah. I don't know. I say let's let everything race right now until Vesks like consistently start coming in at the top of the podium. Then it might be a conversation that we have to have, but I think it's way too early to have that conversation right now. And it's Let them run. There. There's been multiple third place finishes. I got second at Oregon with the best amongst XRs. Um, so it's getting there. So I guess once there's like consistently first place finishes, you'll be like, yo, yo, yo. Okay, well, we'll, we'll hold on. Uh, hold on. <laughs> we need to have it. Too much innovation. I don't want to say we need to have it at a real event, but until it starts ending up like dirt surfers at the top of the pile, then I think, you know, then we need to start having that conversation. Okay. Right? Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. I, I mean, yeah, uh, it's like Hans is doing cool shit out uh, in Europe out there. He's like winning races on it, but yep. we don't know. what. The, yeah, shout out, dude. It's sick. But, you know, not to diminish that uh, accomplishment at all, but we don't know the level of racing that goes on out there or anything. But, dude, Hans, fly on out, man. Come Dirt Surfers 2023. I want to see how that thing stacks up, dude. That's what I've been Be sick. Him. Yeah, get out here. But he said he's not a racer either. He's just there showing what Vest can do. So I think he's proven his point. And he's got the tricks. Yep. Yeah, he does. He's the one that got me onto Vesk. So yeah. big shout out to Hans. Uh, it's actually Hannes. You guys don't pronounce oh. anything correctly. I thought it was just Asian names, but no, you guys don't get anything. It's right. all love, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's all love, though. So it's Hannes for you guys. Uh, just to okay, know. Okay, now we know. All right, last point by Mario Contino. Oh, shout um, out. We love Mario. He has a great point here, a great analogy. Vesk-based development is one of the only ways to keep the XR Plus platform alive. There are certain parts of it that won't be available anymore, like sensors, controllers, etc. Mm -hmm. However, the rails, tires, bumpers, etc. can be made for however long any third-party company wants to. Mm -hmm. Being able to use DIY third-party parts is important, and I think that's important to stress to the folks here because their parts and are instrumental in these builds and a long XR lifespan, lifespan is import, important to the aftermarket. Um, and he compares them to like uh, the e-skate world to like classic cars. And so you guys are gonna be like, kind of like the, the hot rod aftermarket sort of thing. So are you guys gonna keep developing for XR? What do you think? Or are you just focus more on GT now? Yeah, I ride an XR. I don't ride a GT, this is my board. I ride an XR because I platform. like it better currently. I think the GT's got more potential in the long run and eventually it'll get there, but I don't like the high center gravity. I don't love the foot pads. Um, the bumpers are better than the XR stock bumpers were, but they're not quite there yet. Um, yeah, there's just some stuff that I'm working on tweaking before I think I'll go all in on XR or on GT because the weight thing's an issue for me too. I feel like it's more of a stand on top and hold on type thing as opposed to like intuitive, super flowy, like the XR feels to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm an XR rider. Like that's what I ride. That's my main, mm -hmm. you know, I'll mess around on GT every t from time to time, yeah. you know, don't really ride pint at all, but I'm on XR. So why wouldn't I keep making XR parts? Like oh. my whole thing is I really only like making parts for stuff that I'm going to ride. So yeah, I'm going to keep making XR parts as long as there's demand for it. If people want it or I need it, I'm going to keep making them. 
That's what I'm saying. A lot of the people on the XRs and on the pluses that are going to need these parts eventually, you know, are, are part of the OG community and part of the community. And those are the homies. And like he said, if people want parts, people need parts. And these boards are still rocking. Probably going to still be making those parts, y'all. Got the best rails, got the best bumpers in the game, got the best foot pads in the game. That's a no question. But, um, yeah. But, uh, 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 you know when you um, had uh, and you and you just want to and have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want what the fuck are you talking about? Then you are you doing that kid meme that he just uh, <laughs> yeah that's what's going on. <laughs> the suspense. The last one by Ui Makers PEV. Where do you see the future of the sport? Does it die if FM dies, and should the form factor have a new name other than one wheel? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, I don't think it dies, but I think it's like if FM goes under, it severely impacts the growth of it for sure. Uh, I don't think it dies. I don't think it goes anywhere. It's just like anything that was popular at one point. There's still people out there that do it, but it may not be as big as it's going to be. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I kind of see, I see one wheels right now are kind of in that spot, like where they can choose to go one of two directions. And like one direction is rollerblading and the other direction is snowboarding. So it's like one was the absolute biggest thing in the world at one point, like in the nineties, rollerblading was hot shit, man. Everyone was rollerblading. It was like the best selling thing of all time. And then it just totally died and went underground. It's kind of like making a slight resurgence, especially during COVID. I guess they started selling out of rollerblades again, which was weird, Yep. but they sold out everything during COVID. So, but yeah, either that or snowboarding, it all depends on how you grow the community. And the community itself is growing the culture in a way to where they're trying to push it. Like we're trying to push it more of like a snowboard route, but you know, if we treat it like it's just a, like it's a commodity, like it's a widget, you know, if it's just like a product to sell in order to just make money and have everyone on stock things, then I'm afraid it ends up going and you know, we don't get the community and culture support that we need. Then events, I'm a f events and videos and yeah. teams and merch and races and races all that kind of stuff. You know, if it ends up going that direction, then I'm afraid it's going to turn into rollerblading. And that's like been my mission. I've told you this like she years. Hired me. Yeah, like before that even. Like yeah. since <laughs> I started Flow, like, like my number one goal, like our entire mission statement for the whole company is snowboarding, not rollerblading. <laughs> like that's it. Like that's our main goal is to just like grow it in the future to where it turns into snowboarding and doesn't turn into rollerblading. So that's that's my goal. And so I think that pretty much answers the question, right? How do you hit it? Okay, cool. So, what do you think, Bodie? Well, I think about it more like uh, grow like grow like snowboarding or die out like rollerblading mm. as opposed to turn into rollerblading, you know, dying out because she can't die out. But, yeah, I don't know. I, uh... I think we've covered a lot of really good bases, said a lot of really good things, shared a lot of really good thoughts. Um, you'll catch me riding a freaking self-balancing skateboard through the woods, through the streets, until my body falls apart. And uh, who knows, maybe be the best. But we're going to go ride Max's vest right now and give it, a, give it a go, get some tricks in. We actually have our warehouse sale going on right now next to us. There's a lot of sweet rad people for us to go hang out with and ride with. So... That's our thoughts on the vest for now. My name is Buddy Harrison. This is Jeff McCosker. And this is Max Shaw. I blew it. You got it. Close enough. Nailed it. Shaw. Yes. More, awesome. more pronunciation, right? Shaw. 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 I'm going to make a big deal out of Shaw. Well, okay. Shaw. But you're, you carry energy. You got to say your name like Max. Max Shaw. Mad Max, Max Shaw. Shaw. Mad Max Get Shaw. Right, boys. We've come full circle at this point. If you haven't noticed, it takes a while for stuff to stick in my brain sometimes. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm just happy that you guys are so open-minded to this and always encouraging the, the development of the sport and innovation. So we're going to go ride. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys out there.
Thank you. Is that what you needed? Dude, that was an awesome conversation. Sweet. Oh, my board's off. I'll bet your vest is still on now. It's off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, always on. Always on. on. Yep. Always on. Never <laughs> off. They don't time out. Yeah. Just like me. Sha. 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 With the downwards tonal H. inflection. Yeah, downwards, exactly. Sha. Exactly. Sha. It means summer in Chinese for those, for the three of you that care out there. The full Chinese name is Sha Wei Jun. Sha Wei Jun. And it means precious rare horse during summertime. Sha is summer. Boom. Oh, now we know. Now we know. I know we have all these videos of us like not knowing how to pronounce Max's last name. It's been so a joke. I've, I've like intentionally avoided learning the actual pronunciation until somebody looked me in the eyes and said it. And now I have no excuse to not know it now. Full eye contact, hit him with it. Joke's over. What? With the last Full thing? eye contact, hit him with it. Sha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Until the next Olympics. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good. We can cut that whole part. So. Okay. Back on, back on track. my flow I might like, kick back and drop into it but it's like I gotta go really slow and like kind of drift into it and then turn Are you scared of something different yeah. Jeff yeah yeah hey, you got this no I I don't do different shit you know come on this. Spend, do it a few more times you'll get it I'll try oh Jesus that thing's got torque you don't even have to try as much it's very subtle movements yeah it's got a lot of torque yeah, so that's okay. the difference is I can't like, what's different about it from the future motion stuff to it, then turn it, then it's like, good, buttery. <laughs>